Invented in Holland in 1898, the deli slicer launched a revolution behind the meat counter. No longer was it necessary to carve meats and cheeses entirely by hand. With a turn of a crank, the deli slicer produced precise cuts in a jiffy. The modern deli slicer is powered by electricity with a manual override for the carriage that delivers food to a spinning blade. Production begins with a cast aluminum base. A worker installs a cam mechanism that is part of a system for adjusting the thickness of the slice. He threads wiring connected to an on-off indicator light through holes in the base. Then he screws an index knob onto the shaft protruding from the cam mechanism installed earlier. An important warning label comes next. Then he seals the gap around the blade shaft with silicone and removes the excess with soapy water. Next up is the wiring for the slicer motor. She clamps the wires together and bolts the clamps to the inside of the aluminum base. She inserts the on-off switch in the plastic trim, then attaches a device that will slide to adjust the gap between the gauge plate and the blade, thereby controlling the thickness of the cut. The deli slicer is ready for the slide rod and carriage subassembly that will deliver food to the spinning blade. The carriage will move across a track that she now attaches to the lip of the base. She tests the carriage assembly to confirm that it's on track. The next worker secures the blade motor to the wiring with bolts. He connects the motor to the blade shaft with a drive belt. Operating the motor allows him to observe the drive belt and pulleys in action, confirming that they operate smoothly. Once the gauge plate is installed, they move on to making the blade. Computer-guided cutters slope the steel surface and carve a precise bevel onto the rim. It goes from a rough blank to a precisely shaped blade in just minutes. The next worker etches the company logo and production date into the blade metal. Another lathe pre-sharpens the blade to the point where it could cut through something as fine as several thousandths of an inch. A worker slides the blade onto the drive shaft and secures it in place with a nut. He now checks the alignment of the gauge plate in relation to the blade. He turns the thickness mechanism to close the gap and checks it again. With a dial indicator, he measures the position of the blade even more precisely. This tool confirms that the blade is in the exact position for cutting and that it won't lose that position once activated. This deli slicer comes with its own sharpening system, a grinding wheel and protective casing. He mounts the grinder and activates it to hone the edge to razor sharpness. When the blade cuts through tissue paper cleanly, it's ready for real slicing action. A worker screws the arm for the sliding tray to the carriage. He uses a spacer disc to establish the correct distance between the food tray and the blade. He sets the food tray on the arm and checks the gap between it and the blade. Once the two are correctly aligned, he removes the spacer and latches the safety guard to the blade. And now for a test verifying that the tray doesn't drag or scrape against the blade guard. Below, they've installed rods to move the carriage on the track. The system can be manually operated or driven by a second motor. Finally, a worker cleans the slicing machine until it gleams. At 135 pounds, this deli slicer is no lightweight, so they use a crane to lower it into the packing box. Hefty and heavy duty, this deli slicer should have what it takes to cut it at the meat market.